Hello, my name is Corey Gibson and I'm the proud superintendent of Valley Center School District. This video will highlight the main points of our 2016-2017 budget. The budget was presented to the Board of Education on August 8th during a regularly scheduled meeting and will be reviewed and possibly adopted at the August 22nd board meeting following a budget hearing. Thank you for your ongoing support. If you have additional questions about our budget or anything else, feel free to contact me. We begin each budget workshop with the Kansas Constitution, Article 6, which states, Legislators shall make suitable provision for finance of the educational interests of the state. It is then the responsibility of each individual school district and their board to develop and adopt a budget that meets the needs and interests of that community. This particular slide illustrates the size of the various pots of monies districts use in order to operate. This particular slide illustrates 2014-2015, which was then based on a formula. In 2015-2016 and this school year, 2016-2017, we're under a block grant. So basically the various pots of money are almost identical. This is the modified block grant of 2016-2017 after equalization was restored. And as you can see, the various pots are relatively similar to 2014-2015. The general fund funds operations as well as the educational purposes of all, of all parts of our district. Everything from transportation to classroom expenses. The LOB in our case funds technology, all utilities, and all classroom budgets. Capital outlay to the far right is the infrastructure and updates of technology throughout our district. So everything from roofs to parking lots. Food service is exactly that, the funding needed and the flow through the funding uh, to provide meals. Other may be grants as well as um, facility use fees. Then we receive federal grants such as Title I to help those students that may need additional assistance. Bond and interest is the fund that goes in and out to fund our current bond and interest payments. This does include the 2016 bond. And the CAPERS uh, is a flow through from the state as well as local sources to provide funding for retirement uh, for all of our staff who qualify. Many times legislators and others talk about per pupil spending. When we're talking about per pupil spending in this illustration, we're discussing how much money flows in through our budget per pupil. Everything from bond and interest to retirement plans to even admission into the football game on a Friday night is included in this particular graphic. So as you can see, we are very efficient and effective with our dollars in Valley Center School District. In fact, only about eight to 10% of, of districts spend less than we do. In 2015, 2016, although we do not have the comparable data, we spent $407 less per student than in 2013, 2014. In fact, about $1,700 less than the state average. This is due to the block grant. In other words, the money received in 2014, 2015 is the same allocation as we'll receive next year. And when you grow, grow in enrollment, as we have, if you get the same dollars, that means we actually spend less per student. As many people realize, schools across the state for operational dollars have been reduced substantially since 2009. It is for that reason, all school districts have made adjustments to make sure they had enough cash flow to pay the bills on time. Our state has delayed payments or adjusted the funds received mid-year multiple times over. It is for that reason our board
but has made the choice and decision to make sure we have enough cash on hand to pay our bills on time regardless of when the state pays their bills. This year, the State Supreme Court will have a hearing to discuss if we're receiving the appropriate amount of money per the Constitution. Now, we had a similar discussion in 2005, and the courts found that the base state aid per pupil was too low to meet the constitutional requirements. And as you can see in 06, 07, 08, 09, we saw increases. But then the Great Recession and changes in tax policies and structures decreased the amount of money that a state was able to provide to our students. In 2016 and 2017, we don't have a base state for people because we're locked into the same money we received two years prior. However, if I were to estimate the amount of money we're receiving per pupil, since we are growing, I would estimate between 3,600 to 3,700. And you'd have to go back to the 1990s to see those dollar figures per pupil. The base state aid per pupil was the funding we received for operations and instruction for our students. Next year is proposed that the state will have a new finance formula for our school districts and once again will be based on the number of students you have enrolled, number of students you transport, and number of students that may receive additional services. So in a nutshell, here are a few changes from last year's budget to this year's budget. Once again, a reminder that it's not based on enrollment or demographics. You can increase 500 students, and that does not mean that you'll receive additional funds. Likewise, you could decrease a substantial amount of students, and you would not see a decrease in your funding. We're under the block grant. We're locked in. Virtual funding is still separated out and funded based on the student's enrollment. Local option budget, otherwise known as supplemental general fund, plus capital outlay is equalized according to the pre-block grant formula. So you'll see, for example, that LOB increases in 2016 compared to 2015 when you're looking at state aid. However, local effort decreases, in other words, less taxes in those amounts. Total dollars is not a, a substantial increase. We did see a 2% increase in assessed valuation. We did receive a 5% based on the formula of increase in state funding for bond and interest. Our bond and interest payment does increase 661000 but as we'll talk about shortly, that did not result in an increase of local taxpayer dollars. Our district did apply for two additional positions that we've added from the extraordinary needs. So we may be entitled up to $98,000 of additional funding based on our growth. However, keep in mind, if we've been under the old formula, based on our growth of the last couple of years, we'd be seeing a $450,000 to $650,000 additional. People regularly ask us, where does our money come from? So these are just a few graphics that display the percents from various sources. Our 2016-2017 budget resembles the 2014-2015 budget, therefore it can be assumed around 70% of our funds come from the, the state and around 24% uh, has come from local mill levies and much less from federal and fees and miscellaneous.
This is a view of our historical mill rates. From 1992 until just the last couple of years, we had the same school finance formula. And if you look at the mill rates, they remain fairly consistent. However, prior to the last school finance formula, lawmakers had a bill and funding mechanism that required local taxpayers to pay more of the local educational effort. The block grant for the last two years will expire and we will receive a new finance formula in 2017-2018. We are hopeful that the mill rate stays consistent with the way it looked from 1992 on. Code 99 serves as a summary of our budget. It is found in the Art Valley News prior to budget adoption and also found on our website throughout the year. I'd like to point out just a few things about Code 99. One, these special revenue funds down below either come from gifts, grants, federal government, or are transferred from above. So these, in this case, are not always additional dollars. These may simply be these dollars from general fund supplemental general transferred to and spent through these various funds. 2014-2015 and 2015-2016 are actual expenditures. Notice the increase in general fund. We did not spend additional dollars in 2015-2016. However, state legislators made a change in the law that all state funds, even retirement, flow through the general fund first. So it is inflated but no additional dollars were actually spent. Notice in the proposed budget, there's an increase. This is only for budget authority, keeping in mind that we'll not receive all those dollars, but gives us the authority to spend up to that amount. So for example, in capital outlay, we spent 1.2 million in 2014-2015, 1.4 million in 2015-2016, and then we have a proposed budget of 2.9. We do not anticipate spending more than $1.4 million this year. However, should there be a need to arise, such as a major air conditioning and heating uh, system malfunctioning and need to be replaced, it gives us the authority to make the purchase. Or if there's significant damage due to a health storm, we can, we can use those dollars um, to, to provide the, the funding necessary to make the repairs. Does not mean we're going to. So when you look at the Code 99, if there's any specific questions you may have, it's pretty consistent. Once again, our budget from 2014 to 2015 is almost identical to 2016-2017. So expenditures, although they may change line by line, will remain fairly consistent. As you can see, we strive to be very transparent with our budget. And as you may have noticed, we are very effective and efficient using taxpayer dollars that come into our district. However, you may have additional questions about our district, budget, or other things. Always feel free to contact us through email, a phone call, or a drop-in. Thank you, and make it a wonderful school year.